Hey YouTube, it's Tyler the Antenna Man here with part two of a Q&A series on ATSC 3.0. Over the past few weeks, I've received numerous questions about ATSC 3.0. Some of the questions that I will address in this video are, will I need an internet connection to access ATSC 3.0? Can I opt out of data collection? And when will the current ATSC 1.0 signals be shut down, requiring everyone to upgrade their equipment? A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to visit the Edge Networks lab in Boise, Idaho. Edge Networks is only one of a handful of labs across the country working on different aspects of ATSC 3.0. I interviewed Todd Achilles, president and CEO of Edge Networks, with some general questions about the new TV standard. Todd's company has successfully launched two ATSC 3.0 stations in the Boise market with 4K content broadcasting over the air as we speak. Many of you probably remember the digital transition of 2009 and that there was a hard deadline in which stations across the country had to shut off their old analog signal and remain exclusively in digital. Is there a similar deadline for ATSC 3.0? So there's two categories of broadcasters, right? There's the full power broadcasters and then the low power. Uh, so full power broadcasters have a, a simulcast requirement that's roughly five years that they've got to uh, uh, have both a, their 1.0 signal and a 3.0 signal side by side. Um, for low power broadcasters, you can cut over. So there's eight low power broadcasters in the country right now that have cut over to 3.0 full time, and, and we're two of those here in our stations in Boise. Todd mentioned low power and full power TV stations. What's the difference between the two and how do you know which ones are in your area? If you go to antennaweb.org and type in your address, it should show you a list of TV stations that are in your area. Any TV station with the call letters DT at the end are full power TV stations. Stations with an LD, CD, or just a D at the end are considered low powered stations. To reiterate what Todd said, full power TV stations, so most of the TV stations that majority of you are getting, are required to keep their existing 1.0 signal on the air for at least five years. That doesn't mean they're gonna automatically shut off the signal after five years. It means they're required to keep it on for at least five years. I can see it staying on for several years after the fact because TV stations don't wanna lose viewers that did not make the transition. Low power TV stations can make the transition whenever they would like, but again, I do not see this happening right away for the main reason that there really aren't any consumer grade TV tuners on the market yet. And even when they come available, it's gonna take a few years for all the markets to get ATSC 3.0. This is a voluntary launch. It's not government mandated like the digital transition of 2009. So it's gonna be done on a market by market basis. One of the advancements of ATSC 3.0 on the broadcasting end is targeted ads, meaning that broadcasters have the ability to send out different ads depending on a person's demographic, viewing habits, etc. This requires data collection and is kind of controversial because a lot of people don't want their data shared with anyone, despite the fact that your data is shared on Facebook, Google, pretty much any website you go on. Can viewers opt out of any tracking or data collection collection that may be used by TV stations on ATSC 3.0? It's a great question, right? Because it's, a, it's an IP-based um, protocol now, so you can, you're susceptible to all of the same um, ad tracking and everything else that you've got in a you know, traditional web-based or OTT environment. I, I think the answer on that, Tyler, it's, it's, it's too early to tell. Uh, um, I think the people that are watching OTA today do it for a reason and they probably want to have that experience and, and not be tracked at the level of detail that maybe people who are happy with an OTT experience. Um, where this goes in the future, I, I don't know, but I think you, you raise a really good point. In order for TV stations to collect viewers' data or provide on-demand content, a return path must be made from a TV set. So in other words, a TV set has to some way send information to the broadcaster. How would this be accomplished with ATSC 3.0? There is part of the 3.0 standard uh, that relates to a, a return path uh, from, from the home basically back up to the, the broadcast station, right? Now, I don't, I'm not aware of anybody seriously looking at using that return path. And I think what most people are looking at is you just have an internet connection in your, in your set-top box. 
Um, I, I mean, that's a model that we're pursuing because we're both uh, a broadcaster and an ISP. Some of you may have heard Todd say an internet connection. Now, that may scare some of you because either you don't have internet or you don't want to give out your information. You'd prefer not to have your TV set connected to the internet and just access these stations over the air. Are the broadcasters going to hold you hostage, basically saying if you don't connect to the internet to give us your information to target ads to you, you're not going to access our signal? The question I asked Todd was, will people still be able to access these 3.0 signals without an internet connection. Yes, yeah, that, that's all uh, self-contained in, in the transmission that's coming over the year. The current ATSC 1.0 standard has a limited amount of bandwidth and most TV stations can only broadcast one or two HD signals on their frequency and then a few SD subchannels. How many channels will ATSC 3.0 allow? A ton. Uh, you know, you, you've got the uh, certainly in our model is to create a, a, a big bundle of channels. Um, once you've, with the increased over the air capacity and the encoding efficiency that we have with HEVC, you can really create a really rich experience over the air. We've been testing lots of different configurations, but what we've got on the air right now is 10 channels. And one of those streams is actually a 2160p uh, 4K stream. So we're able to get 10 streams, um, one of which is 4K which is just you know infinitely more channel capacity than what you could do over 1.0. Some of you are probably saying there's no way they can fit nine HD broadcasts and one 4K broadcast on a single frequency. The picture probably looks like crap. There's no way they can cram in that many stations on a single frequency. How do they do it? To explain this, I'm going to go through a written statement made by Todd to give you guys good details because there's no way I can memorize all this stuff. And I'm going to be looking down at my phone every so often, just kind of go through this. So his statement had mentioned, our channel capacity is a function of optimizing two dimensions, encoding and modulation. Encoding and modulation, can you put those words in plain English? Todd's going to help me with this one. Modulation refers to how much information or data the TV channel can carry over the air, such as the size of the data pipe, while encoding refers to how much the video can be packaged or compressed before the TV decodes it. Better encoding means the same quality video with less data to carry it, and better modulation means more data can be sent over the air. ATSC 1.0 throughput is 19 megabits per second. There is no ability to change the size of the ATSC 1.0 over the air pipe. However, 3.0 has a ton of throughput options. In Edge's implementation, we are using a relatively high modulation and code rate, which creates a 40 megabits per second over the air pipe. Within this pipe, you add the encoding efficiencies of HEVC, which is two generations after MPEG-2. Broadly speaking, HEVC represents a four times efficiency gain over MPEG-2. That is 1080p30 in MPEG-2 is about 10 megabits, so 10 megabits in the current standard. But you can transmit equal quality at just 2.5 megabits using HEVC. So a quick summary, the current standard is limited to 19 megabits. That's just the space you can use on ATSC 1.0. ATSC 3.0 allows you to increase that space. In Edge's implementation, it's 40 megabits, but I've been told you can have it as high as 59 megabits. Combine that with the efficiency of HEVC that allows a broadcast to use only a quarter of the bandwidth that it had used with ATSC 1.0. You're looking at over eight times the channel capacity. Eight times the channel capacity is truly amazing. And to give you an idea of the potential, all of the stations in my immediate view and region, Lehigh Valley, share on a single RF frequency, channel nine. You have 10 channels on a single frequency and the picture quality is okay. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. If these stations were to keep their existing picture quality and use ATSC 3.0, they could fit 40 channels on a single frequency. ATSC 3.0 allows broadcast TV stations to use encryption, and one of the fears among people is that they have the ability to restrict their over-the-air broadcasts and require a subscription to cable, satellite, or a monthly fee in order to access these broadcasts. 
I asked Todd how he thought this encryption would be used, and he said the same exact thing that I said in my prior video. So instead of having him reiterate what I said, I'm just gonna show you what I said in my prior video. One way we may see encryption used on over-the-air TV and ATSC 3.0 is the example of ABC. It's owned by the Disney Network, which also owns ESPN. Since ATSC 3.0 is more efficient, they can fit more channels in there. So you'll see the same ABC and sub-channels on your local ABC station, but you might also see ESPN available for a subscription. The final question I asked Todd, and this is a question I ask anyone that I'm interviewing, I am a videographer, that is something else I do and in addition to installing TV antennas and helping the country cut the cord. I asked him if he has anything else he wanted to share about ATSC 3.0. I've come out of the wireless industry, spent most of my career there, so I, I think it's, it's really one of the most impressive air interfaces that are out there. Um, and I think it's... Uh, I, I think it's kind of a 3G moment for broadcast. In the mobile industry, everything changed with 3G. That's when really IP networking became part of the mobile industry. And then, you know, there's an explosion of devices and smartphones and, you know, different applications and stuff like that. Um, I, I believe that 3.0 is going to do that same thing for broadcast. It's just going to really transform not just sort of the video, but the services and the experiences we can do over broadcast. It's a big deal. So there you are, several of your questions about ATSC 3.0 answered. What I got on my visit to Edge Networks in Boise, Idaho is that Edge Networks implementation of ATSC 3.0 is to pack as many channels as possible on a single frequency without sacrificing quality. Again, Edge Networks is just one of several labs across the country working on different aspects of ATSC 3.0. Thanks again for watching my channel. Subscribe to it for updates and have an awesome day.